Let's take a look at how easy it is to use effect plugins inside of Cubase and Nuendo. Effect plugins are generally accessed in either two methods, as inserts or sends. Inserts are dedicated to a particular channel or group, and sends are designed so that the effect plugin can be shared amongst many channels in varying degrees. If I wanted to add an insert effect to my saxophone track here, I could select my sax track, go to my inspector, and I can now click on inserts. And as I click here, I could see all of my available plugins in my system. So if I wanted to add a Studio EQ, and then let's say a compressor. Now the effect plugins will actually be processed as in inserts in the order that they appear vertically. So if I wanted to change the order of these, I could just drag and drop by clicking on the little I followed by the number icon, or if I wanted to just change it to a different slot. So if I wanted my Studio EQ to be processed before my compressor, I could just simply drag and drop that way. When I go to my sends, we actually don't see any effect channels, any effects available until the effect channels have been created. And these could be created in two different ways. One is by going to your devices, to your VST connections, click on your group effects tab, and then we'll click on add effects. And let's say I want this to be a reverence reverb. We'll go ahead and load up a quick preset. Or the second method for adding an effects channel track would be to right click, select add track, and then add effects channel track. And we'll come here, let's add a ping pong delay. Now that we've done this, we've created two effects channels that are visible on our project window. Now these effects channels can also allow us to, if we wanted to look at the effects return channel, they'll look very similar to a group channel, but they're gonna have some added flexibility, which we'll point out. But when I send out to my second effect send, I can now come right here and I can see this will go to my ping pong delay. But I could actually stack up to eight different plugins here if I want it. So as I come over here, this one effect send going out to here could have up to eight different plugins on that particular effect send. Now, as I come over here, if I wanted to now send one of my channels to the effect sends, I could click right here and I could choose, I want this to be reverence. I enable it and then we see a slider. And what this slider allows you to do is to vary the amount of how that effect is blended with the original signal. So all the way over to the left would be dry. And as I move the signal towards the right, it would blend more of that reverb in with the original signal. Let's take a listen to this on our saxophone part. So we'll start it off very dry. Then if I wanted a lot of reverb, and what you want to do is to find the sweet spot. Now, when we look at our extended mixer view, we could also have a view right over here if we choose to customize, and we could actually go to what we call send routing. So if I want to right click up here, select customized view, we could have send routing. And what that's gonna allow us to do is to come over here, and now for each channel, we can independently pan the reverb. So if I have a guitar that's panned hard left, I could have the guitar reverb hard right or vice versa. So this way what I could do is have independent panning of my, my individual effects for each independent channel. Now if I wanted to share that reverb on the piano parts, I could come right over here, add to reverence, turn it on, add that reverb. So this way it'll sound like the same room that all of the instruments on the same track are on. So now if I want to just solo the piano part. It's now sharing the same effect, but in varying degrees from our saxophone.
Now, if we wanted to access this in our big mixer, we can come right over here. We'll turn on our mixer, and we're going to have some additional cool functionality here. Now, if you don't see kind of the top view of the mixer, come right over here in the upper left-hand corner, click on the icon there, and now you can see all of your different channels here. So if you want to see all of your meters, all of your uh, studio sends, effect sends, and inserts. So if I come here, I could look at my available inserts. And as I look at my inserts here, let's say I have a studio EQ here. And if I wanted to have this EQ turned on, but let's say I really like this EQ and I want to apply it to other instruments. I could hold down my alt or option and just simply drag. And now those settings have been applied to a different channel. Or if I wanted to, again, move that or just move that insert to a different channel, very, very easy in the methods that we discussed previously. So click on the I followed by the number icon, and then you can freely drag and drop your inserts. When we select our sends, we can also add the same effect to all of our sends in once. So if I want to select the first channel in my mixer, we'll go all the way to the last channel mixer while holding down the shift key. We can hold down the alt or option plus shift and as we do that, we'll select the reverence on send two, and now I'll turn it on, and now I could have varying degrees of that reverb going out on e from each of my channels. Now this way, what I could do is, again, have multiple channels at once accessing that reverb. Now we also have a more flexible way that doesn't necessarily follow a mixer paradigm when we work with particular channels accessing effects. You may just want to have to actually write an effect on a very specific portion of a song. So let's say if I want to take a phrase of the saxophone right here, we'll go ahead and grab our play tool. So let's say at the end of that phrase, what I want to do is to actually apply my effect. So I could select just a region come right here and select my plugins. And let's say I wanted this to go through uh, a bit of chorusing. So we'll go ahead. Now we could actually kind of load up different previews here. So we could say, and you could preview the sound. And now I have a process. And basically what I've done is I've applied that effect to the particular channel. And as I do that, that effect won't actually be playing back in real time taking CPU cycles. It will just play back pre-processed. So if I wanted to have other effects, come right over here, select my plugins, and let's say, let's do something really interesting. So we'll come over here, let's add a ring modulator to our saxophone, and let's add one more effect. So we'll grab our plugins here, and let's say just a little bit of Studio EQ, and then we'll go ahead and process. Now, even after I've saved my project, let's say if I listen to the saxophone now, that it would maybe not give us our best results. So even after saving the results, what I'm able to do is to come right here, and we can select that, go to my audio menu, and go to offline process history. And so if I wanted to, even after the file's been saved, archived, sent to another studio, I can now come here and just remove just a ring modulator effect if I wanted to. So even after saving, I have access, or if I wanted to change the settings on a particular plugin, I could do that. So I could modify my EQ and then process that, or at any time, go back to my original file. So as you can see, whether you want to use traditional studio mixer paradigms of insert effects that are gonna be dedicated to particular channels or groups, send effects to use the same reverb spread across so that multiple channels can have access to it or do very uh, advanced audio processing with your effects without fear of not being able to undo it, Cubase and Nuendo have very great deal of flexibility.